Hey guys, so good to see you all again. This video is going to be an introduction to this concept known as equa-analgesia. What this means is equal painkilling. Now a lot of people think that uh, painkillers, you know, whether it's aspirin or fentanyl, they think that these painkillers, they might be a little bit different, but how different are they? This video is going to kind of introduce you to the system or the chart by which providers keep them all separate and really to try and give you an appreciation of how very strong some of the different drugs that we have. So I chose um, some examples here. These are ones that you've probably heard of, and I, I guess my goal here is to make you aware of just how strong some of our painkillers are um, and how this stuff is not something to be messed around with. Also, I kind of want to talk to you about the gold standard, which is a good introduction or a good segue here. We kind of uh, compare the efficacy or um, how well a painkiller works by how it compares to oral morphine. So that's taking like um, 10 milligrams of oral morphine by mouth or hydrocodone. Now those are kind of our two like gold standards. So really when we're talking about the strength of a painkiller, we want to know, hey man, is it stronger than oral morphine? And that's really what we're talking about. So I have these lists up here and I'm just going to quickly go through them. Again, these are probably ones you've heard of and I'll try and uh, you know, yell out any trade names if, uh, if it comes up. Um, acetylsalicylic acid is actually aspirin, and this is going to be the weakest one I'm going to talk about. This is one 360th as strong as hydrocodone. So people, you know, they come into the hospital and they ask for hydrocodone or that sort of thing, and they say, well, hey, I mean, I've been taking uh, aspirin, and it hasn't really even been touching this pain, maybe some hydrocodone. That is a big step. It's a big step from aspirin to oral morphine. It's one and one three hundred and sixtieth as powerful. So we usually taper this down compared to aspirin. So if you're taking like you know another NSAID might be like ibuprofen. You might be taking four hundred milligrams of ibuprofen, and then they only give you ten milligrams of morphine. Or you know that that would even be huge. But they're gonna the doses will be different to try and compensate for this huge difference in potency. The next one on our list is going to be codeine which is a, an anti-tussiv or knocks out your coughing. So a lot of people have it in cough syrup form. This is one-tenth as strong as hydro or oral morphine. Next one's going to be tramadol. This is a very, very, very popular painkiller right now. Um, it's supposed to be less addictive and also have some sedative properties. So they've been handing out tramadol like candy lately. That's also one-tenth, just like codeine. The next one is meperidine which isn't used as much anymore, but it used to be used quite a bit. It's still used by some people, and it's commonly called Demerol. You might have heard of that. That's one-third as potent or as strong as hydrocodone, oral morphine. This one is going to one over one, because obviously they're, <clears throat> they're, you know, that's the, the gold standard. That's the, the potency we're going for. Next on this list is going to be oxycodone, oxycontin, Percocet, those sort of things. Um, that's going to be 1.5 times as strong as hydrocodone or oral morphine. So if someone said, well, I took a hydro last night, can I have an oxy today? Well, they're actually bumping up the scale. Those aren't synonymous with each other. Uh, before I move too far ahead, I wanted to mention real quick, you might have heard of hydrocodone in its mixture form with acetaminophen or Tylenol. Um, as Lortab or no, Norco, that sort of thing. That's how it's commonly prescribed to try and get that extra pain-killing kick from acetaminophen. Um, IV morphine is actually three times as potent as oral morphine. That's because we're injecting it as a high bioavailability, which uh, without going in too much into farm, what we're talking about here is if we pump it straight into your bloodstream, it's going to hit you a lot pure without being broken down or metabolized versus oral morphine has to you know be absorbed from your gastrointestinal tract that sort of thing next one up on the list here is hydromorphone hydromorphone you might have heard of as dilaudid uh, and that's five times as potent as the gold standard here this is commonly used for post-op analgesia so like uh, someone that just had <clears throat> a colectomy or some major surgery we might give them some dilaudid in the uh Pack you the post anesthesia care unit, that sort of thing. Next on the list is fentanyl. You, almost everyone's heard of that. That's 500 to a, or excuse me, 50 to 100 times as potent as hydro or morphine. And the last one I put on here, just kind of uh, for trivia, is etorphine, also known as M99. 
Um, and this, you might recognize, is the drug that Dexter, in the uh, TV show called Dexter, used to knock out his victims. It hits you so fast, it's so rapid acting, and it's so strong that it just knocks you unconscious. That's why Dexter uses it to knock out uh, the people he's after. We don't really use it in human medicine, but you know, veterinarians, people that are knocking out grizzly bears, that sort of thing, might have it in their arsenal. Uh, this right here is a quick chart to the most common painkillers you'll encounter and uh, what the relative potencies are. So just to kind of give you an idea of um, how we account for these differences in potencies is like if I gave you 10 milligrams of oral morphine and you want to know, well, how much fentanyl would you give me to um, get that same effect? It would take 10 milligrams of these things whereas it would only take 0.1 or 0.2 uh, milligrams of fentanyl. So you can just kind of divide out you know, the potencies and find that out. But I'm just trying to really hit this point home. Whereas if you're taking tramadol, um, you would need 10 times as much tramadol to get the same effect. So they'd have to give you 100 milligrams of tramadol to get the same effect as 10 milligrams of hydrocodone, that sort of thing. So don't make the mistake of saying, hey, I was on whatever, 400 milligrams of ibuprofen, can't you just give me 400 milligrams of oxycodone? It doesn't work like that. Uh, different painkillers hit you at different strengths. And that's an introduction to equi analgesia. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.